Ed, if you can, well, anyway, we'll, we'll get to it. Welcome to Chesmere Christian Fellowship. Also doing a bit of a sound check at the same time as I greet all of you. I think I'm a little bit loud, Ed. What do you think? Okay. Yeah, it's, as someone was saying, it's a long weekend, so we got a few people away, although I saw some of you twice yesterday on a couple of occasions at my house and also for the memorial for Donna's husband. So what we're going to do this morning, this is uh, tomorrow's Canada Day, so happy day, Canada Day weekend. Um, we're going to do what we do every year. and So normally I start the service with a scripture and a prayer, and, but what we're going to do this time is we're going to sing O Canada, verse 1 and verse 4, which is my favorite, which is the one that gets, ex- gets me excited. Because verse 4 of O Canada, as you'll see, it is a prayer. It is a prayer for our country. It is a prayer to our God. You see the first two lines are ruler supreme, right? We have a government in Canada, okay? Um, we're called to honor our government. But above that government is God, right? He's at the top. He's at the highest. That's why his address is ruler supreme. And maybe you know this and maybe you don't know this. Um, the motto of Canada, and this is my Latin, which is a little rusty, you know, amare usca ad mare, which means from sea to sea is the motto of Canada, which is nice, right? You know, Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. But it's based on a verse from Scripture, Psalm 72, verse 8. The founding fathers, the fathers of the Confederation just chose that based on Psalm 72, verse 8. So I'm going to read that. Actually, and then I'll pray to open the service really quickly, but then we'll, we'll go right into O Canada and then the regular worship set. So Psalm 72, verse 8 is, May he rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Okay. And that's our God, and that's our desire. You know, Our God reigns, and our desire is that, it's like the Lord's Prayer, that the, the, God's will will be done in heaven and on earth. That's our desire and our prayer. So I'm going to pray just for the service and for our nation and then we're going to sing. I'll invite you to stand. So God, we, we thank you for this nation of Canada, Lord. I just thank you for this beautiful land, Lord. It, it's spacious. It's scenic, Lord. It's a, it's a wonderful place to live, Lord. We, we're, for all the problems we could name, Lord, we, we do live in peace and safety, Lord. It's a much yeah, more desirable place to, to live than some other places that are experiencing warfare and turmoil and and famine, and flood, and all those things, Lord. So, God, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for protecting Canada, Lord, as we're going to sing, God, keep our land glorious and free, Lord. That is our prayer to you, God. And, God, for the service this morning, just I, I, I pray we would see you, Jesus. I would pray the name of Jesus would be high and lifted up. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for gathering us. God, you saved us, and you made us a people. You brought us together so we could love each other, but so we could also worship you, Lord. And I pray that that happens this morning. Pray for your Holy Spirit to stir us up, Lord, and just pray for all the, all the details, all the sound and audio. Does everything work smoothly so that nothing's a hindrance to worshiping you? We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And will you please stand? We'll uh, sing O Canada, which is not this one, but I'm sure we'll get it soon. <laughs> Verses 1 and 4. And I'll sort of be up here and lead you for that, but then afterwards I'll sit down for the rest. So we're doing this a cappella. Thank you. Now, please remain standing as we're going to sing the first song, Forever. Forever you are faithful. And it's a a non-praise team this morning. We're being led by the songs as we've done. A lot of you have probably already noticed that. Yeah. 
stretched on His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong Forever God is with us Forever From the rising to the setting sun His love endures forever And by the grace of God We will carry on His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God Faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever, forever God is faithful, forever God is strong, forever God is with us, forever. salvation one doorway that leads to life one redemption one confession i believe in the name of jesus christ i believe in the crucifixion by his blood i have been set free i believe in the resurrection hallelujah his life is death's defeat oh praise to god the father oh praise to christ the son oh praise to the holy spirit our god has overcome the king the 
down or as you're sitting down, please take the time.
Right, we got the first slide up, thank you. All right. Just as we go into announcements, as we kind of work our way gently there, one of the, the, the lyrics we sang in the second song, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, probably coming from Romans 1, 16. It's worth reading. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. Okay. So that's just the, the reference in there. And amen, yes. Thank you for the amens. Okay, some things happening this week and this month, some events in July. So prayer night is now first and third Tuesday of each month, so which will be in two days. On the, the second, we'll have prayer, and then prayer will also then happen on the 16th. Uh, next, please. Okay, so Stampede Breakfast, volunteer meeting. Yes, Ed, today after church, where? Okay, yeah, just... Just huddle up at the back of the church, just trying to organize volunteers, like for setting up the tents and for serving, and we're probably looking for people to come, because we want to start it at 9, and for people to be here probably at 8, for that first hour of just getting everything ready for the Stampede Breakfast in two weeks. Yes? Oh, wonderful. Right, and Verna has a clipboard where you can just, uh, yeah, decide on it, so it just helps with the organization, like it's... We've done it enough that it works smoothly, but it works smoothly probably because we organize it a little bit ahead of time as well, too, to say who's doing what. Okay. Summer camp in less than two months now, Salem Acres. Uh, yes, there's a sign-up list. People have already started. Talk to Ben or Esther if you want more information about it. As we've said as well, too, that the cost is there. If that's a problem for someone or just like, I'd like to go, but I can't quite afford it, please... Let us know. People, I believe, will be happy to help with that. And I'll, I'll make the plug again. If you're not coming, to come up on the Saturday. I don't know how it would work for, for meals, but you can just be with the, with the church family at the campground. It's a lot of fun. It's a beautiful property up there on the Red Deer River, just up high. Uh, just lots of things to do. We saw moose last year. We saw deer. We had mark caught fish. We just, anyway, a lot of wildlife and good scenery there. What kind of fish was it again, Mark? <laughs> Golden eye, okay. Okay, wow, and we're already in the birthdays. So Derek Frost, who I think is on his way up to Cold Lake, he'll be doing this the first of his first couple of weeks up there. Um, if he's not gone now, he's, he'll be leaving soon. But then Levi, it's your birthday this week, on the 6th, which will be Saturday? Yeah. Yes, okay. Levi, please stand. We're going to sing to you and just you. Happy birthday to you. Okay, what would it be? Eleven? Yeah, okay. Hey, right. good guess. Okay, are there anniversaries? No, I guess there are no anniversaries. Okay. Yeah, I think those are the two big events this July. Like, things kind of wind down a little bit for uh, over the summer. There's no Bible studies happening right now. But the Stampede Breakfast, that's a big thing, which most, many of you have participated in before. And now to the offering. Uh, yeah, uh, we thank you for your generous donations, which keep the operations of the church going and support the missionaries that we, that we support. And there are two ways to do it. There's the offering uh, box at the back that you can drop it in, or you can make an e-transfer online to the ccfdonations55 at gmail.com. And I want to, before I pray for the offering, I just want to read from uh, 2 Corinthians Nine here, and this is this God's encouragement for us to be generous. It's the idea of the idea of sowing and reaping, and I know there are abuses. Just the whole prosperity gospel, like sow into this, and you'll be rich. like that's that's anyway. That's not God's heart. That's not God's intention. I pray that that doesn't um, affect how you how you receive this. This is just God's promise to us. He says, "Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously." Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. To give, not reluctantly under compulsion, 
for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, that in all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So all, all, all. So that's God's encouragement to you to be generous. Um, to support the church, yes. To support other charities, missionaries, people you know in need. God loves a cheerful giver. And as we write again as well, too, it's not under compulsion. It's just what you choose to give. And God will bless you for that. So let's give thanks to, to God, and I'll just pray for the offering. So God, we thank you for your promises. We thank you for the freedom as well, too, Lord. Uh, you want us to give what we have decided to give. You give us that freedom, Lord, and yet you also encourage us to be generous. That is, we are generous towards others and towards you, Lord. You will bless us in return. So help us, Lord, in the simplest, purest way to take you at your word, Lord, just to, to sow generously, just wherever needs we see come up, Lord. And thank you for your generosity to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing three more songs, then before the next... Uh, and, yes, yeah, so the first one, I don't know if we've sang it here before, maybe you know it, yes and amen, but it's based on a scripture from 1 Corinthians 1.20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Yeah, yeah thank you, Donna. Thank you, Ed. Just on that, that's the, the whom shall I fear? Obviously, no one, right? Just we, we, we fear God, we have the proper reverence for him, but we're not afraid. And we do have an enemy, right? Our, our God has enemies, we have an enemy, there's forces we battle against, but we are not the ones to be afraid. Right? Greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in the world. So it's not we're so great, it's he's so great, and we're with him, hallelujah. Praise him. Amen. Okay. Uh, I'd like to release the children now for Sunday school. Lord, we just bless their lesson, just entrust them to your care and the care of the teachers who have prepared the lessons for them. And then we who are staying upstairs will transition into time of congregational prayer and then then the message. I think, oh, we didn't change the, I think we've, we can pray for them again, but I think that's the same as last week, the missionary focus. Sorry, that's I, my oversight. We just copied and pasted from last week, that part of it anyway. But sure, well, they're going to be doubly covered in prayer these past two weeks. Other prayer requests, things we can pray for? Yes, Manoah. Okay. How's, the, how's the throat, the sore throat, Manoah? Good, okay, sure. Yeah, headaches, whatever that is, we'll ask God to heal you or direct you in that. I feel like I, I want to, I almost have a category ready here. I, I know there's several people with back issues. There's several. I mean, I, I think Ben is like on the men, but I mean, it, it, he's had something for a while, and I know Ed and, and uh, Regina and Pastor Darcy. And so there's just like about three or four. Maybe there's more that uh, just raise hands or not raise hands. But uh, just pray for that healing. Like the Lord, those just four I mentioned. I mean, and sometimes there are things we can do in the natural, like we, we don't discount that. There are things that we can do to help, but some of us, God, I just need a touch from you. <laughs> like, uh, think of Pastor Darcy, crushed vertebrae, just there's not a lot we can do for that humanly, but there's everything God can do. So I'll just lift up those four people just for healing for their back. Okay, other things we can be praying for. Yeah, sorry.
they're not operable. I guess they're, I guess they're then treatments. I just want to pray sort of accurately here. Okay. Okay, sure. We'll pray for Uncle Kevin. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, thank you, Robert. For David Rose just having another bout of vertigo, which seems to come and go, and it goes, it gets gone, and then it comes back. So, yeah, we'll lift him up in prayer. We miss him. We miss him not being here. Um, I, I'm just going to pray for Stanley O as well, just for him to come home. We have, we've seen him, we're seeing him more. I think he's spending even, you know, a week at a time at home, but he's not yet left uh, Clifton House, so we'll pray for Stanley. And oh, thank you, yeah, good. Thank you, Elena. That's a good prayer. Okay, I'm going to pray for, I will pray for just peace and just the, the places in the world uh, where wars are happening. And I might, I'll pray for a city too, just with the, with the stampede coming, just, um, I don't know, I, I guess. Yeah, I'll just testify. I remember two years ago when I was first here, like, I'm in Calgary. It's the Calgary Stampede. It's the biggest rodeo in the world. Like, wow. But I found most people who live in Calgary are like, oh, yeah, it's the Stampede. <laughs> kind of just, I mean, so I think there, there's good sides to it, and then there's maybe just maybe unwholesome sides to it as well, too. So um, anyway, that's just part of my education. I'd always watch it on TV with, you know, Ron McLean and everything. Wow, the Calgary Stampede. And then, you know, Calgarians aren't always as excited <laughs> If I can say that the right way, but yeah, just pray for, pray for our city, um, and just pray for just the events and just whatever prayer we need. God knows. I just want to lift it before Him. Yes, Mark. Okay, so wisdom for you and Elaine and communication and action. Yeah. Sure, yeah, okay. Oh, I see, yes, Andy. Oh, okay, surely, for sure. And Sam was your hand, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. We'll uh, we'll put that in the Lord's hands, Sam. Okay, and that's a good time to let's turn to Philippians four. This is the lead, and as we start our prayer. So this is this is related to you, but this is related to. To everyone, for everything we're saying, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, which we're doing with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, so that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah, man. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's looking good, but yeah, we'll pray it gets to the finish line for sure. Put that in God's hands. Yeah. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we, we love you, we worship you, we adore you. We just love being your children. You're a good, good father. And you sent your son Jesus to this earth just to, to show who you are. Anyone who has seen Jesus has seen the Father. And also you sent Jesus to die for our sins, to bring salvation, forgiveness, and a new life for us, God. For that, we thank you. 
And Lord, you, uh, just as we live our lives and as we live in these communities, Lord, you also encourage us to bring our, our prayers, our requests, our petitions before you, just to ask for your help, to ask for your provision, Lord. And so this morning, we lift up before you, Pastor Maurice and Layla, and just God, bless their ministry, bless their discipleship, their evangelism. I know Pastor Maurice reaches many people, both in person and online, Lord. He's sometimes he pulled in a lot of directions, which is usually a good thing, Lord. And I just pray you would, he would not grow weary, Lord. I just pray for all the resources and support he needs. I pray for real a breakthrough, Lord. I pray for, for true salvations as well, too, Lord, that you will see people coming to the Lord, be able to disciple them or just uh, direct them to uh, where they can be disciples of God. And Lord, I just pray for those uh, suffering from headaches. I just just pray for, for Manoah, Lord, just that, uh, yeah, that he would not um, suffer from them, Lord, or just maybe even figure out maybe what causes them, Lord. Maybe there's something you can do or change and they go away, Lord. We just ask you for, for your help um, for Manoah there, Lord. And God, we pray for Shirley as well too, Lord, just suffering from headaches, God. Um, God, just pray you'd heal her, pray you'd deliver her. And Lord, if there's anything that she can change or, or do, Lord, if there's something just... A step she can take, Lord, will you direct her to that, Lord? But we just, we fully put the situation in your hands, God, to help surely that she would no longer have headaches, God. And God, I, I pray for the, the several people I know, Lord, who have back problems, just back issues and, and treatments needed, Lord. And God, I just, as I said, there's, there are things sometimes that, that doctors can do. There's adjustments we can make, Lord, and chiropractors can be wonderful, Lord, just for the adjustments, but... There's a lot of situations, Lord, we just we need your healing touch, Lord. There's nothing more we can do. Lord. And so I just, I lift up Ed. I just pray that Ed would, would have healing in his back, Lord. I just pray this, whatever shot he has to take would be effective, Lord, or that he wouldn't need the shot at all, Lord. You could do that, God. I just pray to restore our brother Ed to health, Lord. And, and I, I do pray that he could play hockey again, Lord. Just be, be well enough to continue that activity, Lord. And Lord, I pray for Regina as well, too, for, for her back, Lord, just that she'd be able to, to get around and be mobile and be able to do her job and just, um, just the, the other issues in her body as well, too, Lord. I pray that the job and the work she does go well, Lord, and just pray you'd give her the healing touch she needs for her back, Lord. And I pray for Ben as well, too, Lord. I just, I think he's still working through some issues. I think it's not quite uh, healed, Lord. I think it's better maybe than it was, but it's been ongoing, Lord. Maybe it's even six to nine months that, he just had back problems, Lord. So, God, I pray you would heal him. And I pray you would heal our beloved Pastor Darcy as well, too, Lord. He just, I know a few weeks ago, we just having really, really bad spasms of pain, Lord. And I think it's subsided since then. We thank you for that, Lord. But just, Lord, his back is, is in a bad situation, Lord. Just uh, crushed vertebrae and osteoarthritis and just, so, yeah, a lot of deterioration, Lord. And I pray you would just strengthen his back, Lord, and heal his back, Lord. God, you're the healer of, of all our bodies, anything, Lord, deaf and, and mute and, and, and paralyzed, Lord, and, and, and backs as well, too, Lord. So that's what we bring before you this morning, Lord Jesus, to heal these people, Lord, strengthen, straighten out their backs, God. Pray for Araya's Uncle Kevin, Lord, who's got the diagnosis with cancer, Lord, and, and, and right now they're saying it's inoperable, Lord. So, God, is, I just pray for, for your solution. I just pray for a way ahead for him, Lord. just direct him. What should he do if the doctors say we can't operate, Lord? Is there treatments? Is there just, just sort of a, a vision or a path for him to go on, Lord? And God, I also, I pray for his healing as well too, Lord. I pray there will be possibilities. I pray there will be hope for him, Lord. I just pray for his health, Lord. We bring Kevin before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Pray for David Rose, Lord. I pray just for his vertigo, Lord, that it would go away. And Lord, it has gone and it comes back, Lord. I pray it would leave and not come back. Um, thank you for everything he's able to do. Thank you. We were able to enjoy time with him yesterday, Lord, but today he, he wants to be here, Lord, but he can't because of the vertigo, Lord. So it's, it's a little bit of a mystery, Lord, but whatever it is, Lord, it's not a mystery for you. And so we pray you remove the vertigo from him in your love, in the name of Jesus. Pray for our full homecoming for Stanley, Lord. Pray you just give Stanley and Connie wisdom about when to leave Clifton House. When is he well enough to be at home so that Connie can take care of him so that everything is in place for him to stay, Lord. I pray you'd fully heal him from the stroke that he suffered over a year ago, Lord. Lord, I pray for, for marriages, Lord. Strengthen marriages, Lord. Lord, you bless covenant. You honor covenant, Lord, but we know that covenant and marriage is under attack, Lord. It's under attack by the enemy, Lord. It's under attack. Just a lot of messages in our society are against commitment, Lord, are against covenant. It's 
is do what pleases you, Lord. It's just that there's a lot of just self in the world, Lord, and it, it, it infiltrates into, into the church and into our lives as well too, Lord. So, God, I just pray that husbands and wives would just be united, um, Lord, be, would be committed to each other, committed to you, Lord. And I pray where difficulties arise, Lord, they would both be quick to say, you know, I'm sorry, I forgive you, and I love you, Lord. I pray that just those, those special phrases, Lord, which are just so powerful, Lord, um, I just pray that that would be there, to be grace or peace, Lord. So I just pray if there's any resolutions that, that are needed, Lord, in any marriages just right here in this body, Lord, that you would provide for that, Lord. Give wisdom, give unity, give humility to both husbands and wives. And increase their love for each other, Lord. I pray for every couple here who's married, that every year they would be more in love than they were than they, than they have been, Lord. That would be ever-increasing love for them, God. God, we pray for our unsaved loved ones, friends and family, Lord, who, who don't know you, Lord, who maybe heard the message about you, but haven't met you, Jesus, don't have the, the joy of knowing you, don't have the hope that's in you, Jesus. All these songs we sing, whom shall I fear, Lord? We can only sing that, Jesus, if, if we're in you, if we belong to you and you've saved us, Lord. So our, our hearts cry, Lord, that our loved ones would find that same freedom and joy and deliverance and salvation and forgiveness, Lord. And so help us in our words and our witness, Lord. Our actions, our attitudes, our reactions, and even just the words of, of explanation we share of the gospel, Lord. Just guide us in that by your Holy Spirit. Lord. I want to pray for Sam, who's contemplating retirement, Lord. And it, it's a scary thing. If he retires, what will he do? What will his life look like? God, thank you that every one of Sam's days is in your hands, Lord. It's recorded in your book, as it says in Psalm 139. So God, if you have retirement in mind for Sam, will you make that clear to him, Lord? If you want him to keep working, Lord, will you also make that clear, Lord? May Sam be able to make a decision just with, with, a, with peace and with a good, clear conscience that God is blessing me to retire or God is blessing me to continue working, Lord. Just make it clear for him and give him the guidance and the wisdom he needs, Lord. I pray for, for Mark and Elaine as well, Lord. Just, yeah, just give them wisdom and words and actions, Lord, that they may act in love and in truth, Lord. They want to obey you, but they also want to, in this, just make the, the sort of best witness and, and just testimony of, just of their convictions to these people, Lord. And, and so uh, just guide them in that, Lord. May, I, I pray for a simple solution as well for Mark and Elena. It doesn't have to be complicated, Lord, but just lead them into what they should do and how they should respond to the invitation, Lord. Lord, I pray for our city. Pray that the water situation would, would be resolved. Thank you. It has been good progress, Lord, although initially then they found more problems. But Lord, I believe the past week has been, has been good. They've made a, they seem to be near completion, Lord. I just pray you'd bless the work of the engineers and the decision makers and just to be able to bring it to the finish line, Lord, and that our city would just have a, a stable, reliable, um, and clean supply of water, Lord. Lord, and I pray for our city as the stampede begins as well, too, Lord. Just it's... It's maybe a mixed blessing, Lord, or it's just some good things come and some less than good things come, Lord. But I just, Lord, I just pray your presence would be there, Lord. I pray your presence would be there as a, as a restraint um, against revelry, against debauchery, against just the, the partying spirit that can sometimes come, Lord. Lord, I just pray for that the wholesome nature just of the stampede, just uh, you know, farming and, and animals and, and skills and, and things for the children as well too, Lord. I pray that that would be just uh, that, 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 that would dominate as well, Lord, that that would just be the, the stronger spirit to the stampede, Lord. Pray it would be a blessed and wholesome celebration. And God, all these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, Ed, could you please come up and pray for me for the message and then we'll, we'll go into that. Test. Yep, we're good. Right. Bow our head in prayer. Jesus, we come to you today. We put Pastor Vince before you. We give you thanks for him. We pray, Lord Jesus, again, that you use his mind, use his heart, and use his lips to speak your word. We ask an anointing on him, Lord Jesus. And Lord Jesus, we just pray that you'd quicken that word to our hearts also, Lord, as we hear from you today. Again, we ask a blessing on Pastor Vince, in Jesus' name, amen.
And this is our gospel. The forgiveness of sins through the death of Jesus Christ, bringing reconciliation to the Father, that, that homecoming, um, and resulting in new life by the Holy Spirit. And the gospel verse, 1 Timothy 2, 5-6, to six, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. Okay, we're in a new series. Uh, the Hebrew names for God as found in the Old Testament. And if that is a little bit cryptic, then the next slide will uh, explain it. So what you see in the Old Testament, there's just a, there's the name, there's God, but there's a lot of just different ways that the different characters, or the way that God reveals himself, just the way that God is described. The God who sees me, that's the story we're going to look at today, the story of Hagar. There's also El Shaddai, God Almighty, uh, Genesis 17. There's the eternal God. There's the name Yahweh, I Am, or Jehovah, as it sometimes comes out. There's the Lord who heals, Jehovah Rapha. There's Jehovah Saba, the Lord of hosts. That's the, the God of angel armies we sang about. There's one in, in the story of Gideon as well, the, the Lord is peace. So there's, there's several. So we're going to do, I don't know, maybe six of them. So we'll do one this week and one next week. Then it's the Stampede Breakfast. Then I'm away. And we'll be doing some in August, so this might even take us till September, um, the different ones. And there's often a New Testament connection as well, too. We're looking at an Old Testament story, but there's a New Testament connection as well, too, because our God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So today, the focus of the story will be on, on Hagar. This is Egyptian's, uh, Abraham's Egyptian maidservant, who's the mother of Ishmael. And there's a whole like, backstory and consequences of the whole uh, Hagar and Ishmael um, situation we're not going to get into. We're not going to go big picture, just the small picture. Just how does Hagar encounter God? And what, we learn, what she learns about him and what we learn about him. Yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah, today, so I should have been on this slide as I was just speaking. El Roy, the God who sees me. So Genesis 16 we'll read from, that's the the first story about her, and then just a second similar story that comes up as well, too, in Genesis 21. Now, Sarah, oh, and this is before Abraham and Sarah have been renamed, so, I mean, and sometimes I, I will call him Abraham, even though he has not been called, he's still Abraham, you know what I mean? But anyway, so sometimes I might say the wrong word, but you'll know who I'm talking about. Now, Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. But she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. So she said to Abraham, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Abraham agreed to what Sarai said. So after Abraham had been living in Canaan ten years, Sarai, his wife, took her Egyptian slave Hagar and gave her to her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar and she conceived. When she knew she was pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Then Sarai said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my slave in your arms, and now that she knows she is pregnant, she despises me. May the Lord judge between you and me. Your slave is in your hands, Abram said. Do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from? And where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. And then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, You are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son. The Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. And she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. That's the El Roy. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kadesh and Bered. Now, five chapters later, 
It's a similar story for Hagar, except this time is she's more desperate. And she didn't run away. This time she's sent away. And we're just picking it up in the middle of the story. She's there with, with young Ishmael. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift up the boy and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went out and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah. So we're going to look at lessons from the story about the God who sees me, just what Hagar learns, and then from there, response and applications for us. And then we're going to look at a New Testament example of this, of the God who sees me, the new, of Jesus and our salvation. And so there's two stories today, both kind of similar. She's wandering in the desert, Hagar, and she's alone. Uh, actually, well, the second time she has Ishmael. And in one of them, we see this name for God, the God who sees me. Now, we know from the rest of Scripture, this, this whole Hagar-Ishmael idea, it's, it's not from God. Okay? It's, it has consequences it looks like Abraham and Sarah are, are impatient or they're discontent with God's timing. God had made promises, but in the meantime, they make up a plan of their own. And so it looks like Sarah comes up with the idea, but then Abraham agrees with it and he goes along with it. Um, then when, she, when Hagar gets pregnant, she begins to despise and look down on Sarah. And so Sarah is offended by Hagar, so Sarah mistreats Hagar, um, one thing you can say about Abraham in here is he really fails to lead. He does not take any initiative. Each time he just says, okay, whatever you think is best. Okay, whatever you think is best. I think it was his role, this is maybe a little bit personal opinion, but he's supposed to say no to the plan in the first place, but he doesn't. You see, there's sort of a, a passive Abraham here. So in this story, all three human characters are in the wrong in some way. Abraham does something wrong, Sarah does, Hagar does. And into the story, just of like human, human confusion, God breaks in. He intervenes. And he comes to Hagar as El Roy, the God who sees me, verse 11. Now, as sort of a textbook definition of God, we might say that God sees, right? God is omniscient, right? He sees everything, nothing escapes. But this is not just the God who sees. This is the God who sees me. Okay? You see the personal side to this already. Okay, we're going to look at how personal this is. And first thing to notice about God is he comes to Hagar in compassion. Verse 11, it says, he has heard your misery. So he sees Hagar and he sees what she has been through. Okay, her life has not gone unnoticed. Maybe someone needs to hear that today. Maybe more than one person. If you've been going through a hard time, okay, if you've been having some misery, that has not gone unnoticed by God. He has seen your misery. Okay, he sees you. And further to God's compassion in this, in the first instant, Hagar is, is a runaway, and she's, she's alone. She's pregnant. She's in the desert. She's, she's vulnerable in that sense. Um, in the second incident, though, she's even more desperate. Okay? She's out of water for her and her son. And then God comes and provides water for her and for Ishmael. So this is a personal encounter of God coming to her, but it's also a rescue. It's a life-saving mission, especially in the second incident there, where he comes. So we see a God who, who sees and who cares and who intervenes. He does all three. And we dealt with this question a little bit in, in the suffering series. Sure, I can believe that that God sees, but does he even care? You know, people, a doubtful person might ask that question. The answer is yes, he does see, he does care, and he takes action on behalf of his people. And you might not get an encounter exactly like this. Okay, you might not get an angel visiting you. You might not get the audible voice of God. I found most people don't get that. It does happen, but that's, most people don't get that. Um, it could happen to you. Um, but this is a revelation of the character and the heart of God, that everything he is towards Hagar, he is towards you. That 
that same care, that same compassion, that same attention that he has. Maybe right now, I don't know, maybe you're waiting for God to show up. And maybe you're in a situation where you're asking God, God, how long? But our God, he sees, he hears, he does not miss things. He does not forget. God never says, oh, I was supposed to help that person, but I forgot. It slipped my mind. Okay? Maybe you know that, but that's not our God. Okay? And if we look at the story of the Israelites in the book of Exodus, maybe they could ask the same thing. Does God even see? Does God even care? You know, how long is he going to be? And here's the answer that God speaks to Moses. This is the burning bush incident. Exodus 3, 7 to 8a. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. Okay? We see that. I have seen their suffering. And from the story, we know what God does next. Okay, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, he delivers his people, Israel. Okay. So we have a God who sees all, and then a God who moves in compassion. The second personal side of this revelation Notice that he calls Hagar by name. Hagar, slave of Sarah, you know, where are you going? So this is not an, an impersonal God who is speaking to her. He speaks to her in, with familiarity. And I think in the New Testament, there's, there's a more forceful incident, but in Acts 9, the Apostle Paul, or he's Saul back then, he's the persecutor of the church. He's going to get knocked to the ground by a blinding light. And what does God say to him? Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? Okay. He knows his name, and it comes in. Um, there's other incidents in Scripture as well, too. Abraham was called, Samuel was called. It's probably a long list, but just um, God comes in knowing the person's name. And we also see from Hagar and also from Saul's experience, God is conversational. He asks her a question. What are you doing? Where are you going? And I think with, the, with, with Saul as well, too. I mean, the first thing Jesus says to, to Saul is, why are you persecuting me? Like that's, that's how the conversation got started, just between Jesus and Saul, right? and who becomes the Apostle Paul. So we have a God who wants to talk to us. Okay? Hear that today. And when we did that Hearing God series with, with John Bevere, that's one of the foundations of it. It's just, we have a God who wants to speak. He's a father who wants to speak to his children. Right? So he comes in conversationally. And lastly, in keeping with the very personal nature of this, of what we see about God, is that God has a specific destiny for Hagar's life. Okay? That's everything that was said about Ishmael and, and, the, the, um, and her own descendants, who will be too numerous to count. That's verse 10. Now, we know also from the biblical story and from history, there's going to be a tension between Ishmael's descendants and Isaac's descendants, but this is still a blessing over Hagar. Okay? You're descendants will be too numerous to, to count. It's the, it's the generations that follow that the tension happens. So this word of God is still an honor to her. In fact, God promises to bless Ishmael as well too. Abraham says, if only Ishmael could live under your blessing. Genesis 17, 20, God says, I will bless Ishmael. I'll make him into a great nation. So God has a good plan for Hagar. Okay? He has a plan to bless her. Okay? And as she's alone and she's running away from that plan, he comes in and gives her the direction and the encouragement that she needs. Now, if this is all true for a Hagar, okay, and I believe it is, we have a God who sees, who cares, who knows us, who knows our name. Then in the second section, I just want to look at some applications for us. And going back to the point we just looked at, yes, God intervenes to rescue Hagar, okay, but he also gives her direction. Okay, there's also sort of a, a correction or a direction and a word of instruction for her to return to Sarah, her mistress. That's in verse 9, the first incident. Okay. And what that means for us, when God intervenes in our lives, yes, it's for provision, it's, it's assistance, it's sometimes there's something we need which he provides. But often, it's also with a word of direction. If you want God to break into your life, that's great. You know, God, come speak to me. But he'll often redirect you or correct you. And again, it's because he has a purpose for us. Like if God didn't have a plan for your life, then I guess he could sit back and say, well, I don't care what they do. But hallelujah, that's not true. Okay? God does have a plan. He does have a purpose for your life. And with that means direction, you know, instructions, sometimes correction. 
We see a God today who watches us, but that he also watches over us. He's concerned for our welfare because he's a shepherd. You know that picture? The Lord is my shepherd. Okay, so that means protection and guardianship. So he cares about what you do, and he cares about what happens to you. Okay, he cares about both. And that's why we find prayers in the scriptures that say something like this. Direct my footsteps to your, according to your word. Let no sin rule over me. That's Psalm 119, verse 133. Or in Psalm 27, 11. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. So as God's children, we are looking for his direction. We want him to keep us on the narrow road. Jesus says, you know, narrow is the way that leads to life, Luke 7. So we're looking for that. And since we trust and believe God, okay, we believe he knows best, he has our best interests at heart. Okay, when he gives that direction, our, response, our natural response is to obey. The obedience is natural. It's a joy for a believer. Because God, you know best. And if you show me I should go here, then I'm going to trust you. And we might also thank God. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the clear direction that you give us. There's a song from, I think it's 1964, it's even in our hymn book, that I really like. Um, Capture some of the heart of this. Okay, it's called, He's Everything to Me. Anybody know that song? Anyone? I think I tried it once on a Tuesday night and no one knew it. <laughs> okay. Well, here come the lyrics. I won't, uh, I won't sing it, but... I don't think I'll sing it. I don't <laughs> might miss the key. So, Till by faith I met him face to face. And I felt the wonder of his grace, that I knew that he was more than just a God who didn't care, that lived away up there. And now he walks beside me day by day, ever watching o'er me lest I stray, helping me to find that narrow way. He's everything to me. So in this person's experience, God became personal to him, not distant and far away. Sure, I can believe in a God, but he met God personally. And now God walks beside me. And he keeps me on the straight and narrow path, which again, I said, he, I said is a good thing. It's his love and care and his direction that we need. So the, the second application to this as well, too, this idea that God is watching you, that's good news for a believer, okay? God is watching you. <laughs> that's good news, right? I know that can maybe be put as sort of a heavy thing. Oh, God is watching you, but it's just, let's, we're going to push that aside. Okay? It's good news. If I'm off track, if I'm walking into danger, I want God to be watching me and to turn me and redirect me um, and keep me on the path that he wants me to keep. So I want God to warn me, okay, if I'm headed for trouble. That warning can come through his word. That warning can come through a fellow brother or sister, right? That warning can come through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That warning can come through a dream. There are many ways. But we want a God who cares for us, warns and redirects and again, that's the, the new life change. When you're born again, wow, yes, I want God to be watching me. Now, something else you see in Scripture, though, is the contrast between those who know that God is watching us and go, those who act or pretend as if God isn't looking. And there are dozens, maybe even hundreds of examples of the, in Scripture. But I'm just going to put up a couple just to show the contrast. So Psalm 10, verse 11. He, this is talking about the wicked man, says to himself, God will never notice. He covers his face and never sees. Or a warning in Isaiah 29, 15. Woe to those who go to great depths to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their work in darkness and think, who sees us? Who will know? So according to the Bible, the people who do that, who act or pretend or assume God isn't watching, okay, they're called a fool. It is a fool who says that. It is foolishness to say, God doesn't care. He doesn't see. He's not watching. That's Psalm 94, verses 8 to 11, but it's in many other places. And in Proverbs as well, the fool in his heart says, there's no God, and then acts accordingly. So, so we believe, back to the good news, we believe God is watching. We want him to be watching. Okay? That's the change of being born again. In fact, we seek him. We're looking to meet with him. We want to see him face to face. And the other, the other good news then is we're not trying to hide from God or avoid him, okay? Because of Jesus, we don't have to hide from God. You remember Adam and Eve in Genesis 3? They hid from God. They were ashamed, okay? Jesus takes that away. Forgiveness, freedom from shame and guilt, okay? So we want to meet with God. We want to see him. We're not running or hiding from him. So God cares. 
about everything you do, and he's watching over you as a good shepherd would do. Okay? And he knows everything before. He knows your name. He sees what you've been through. All those things. But now we're going to look at that New Testament example. We're going to look at Nathaniel's experience when he meets Jesus. And you'll see in the story that Nathaniel goes from being a doubter, from being a skeptic, to a believer, just like that. And, and we're going to look at what convinces him, what wins him over. Because there's a lot of the same lessons in this story of Nathaniel as, uh, as, a, as what we get from, from Hagar's experience as well, too. So Philip first meets Jesus, then he runs to Nathaniel and says, we've met the Messiah. And then this is where we pick it up. In, this is John 1, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, but whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph. Nazareth. Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said, you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. Okay. So he's a doubter. He's a believer. It just goes just like that. What convinces Nathanael? Why does he change? I would describe it this way. He knows me. He noticed me. He saw me, and he knows me. He sees within me, knows me intimately. And this is very much the Hagar story. Okay? God sees me, but he knows me as well, too. It's good to have both. Again, if God just sees but doesn't care, well, then like, that's not so encouraging, right? But he sees, he cares, and he knows us. Okay? And looking at the second aspect first, where Nathaniel realizes you noticed me, Something about that time under the tree, it's not explained, but it looks like it was some just private moment. Or maybe Jesus was far away and couldn't possibly see him physically. We don't know. But somehow Nathaniel thought he was alone, and Jesus said, I saw you underneath the tree. Wow, you could see me, okay, whatever it was. All this time you were watching. Yeah. Now, some people have that kind of story, that sort of testimony when they come to faith, right? where they say, you know, when I finally met the Lord, I could see that all this time, all the, he was there. I wasn't looking for him. <laughs> okay, people might, that's often our confession, right? But he saw me long before I was even interested in him. And I guess that's true for everyone, because 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. So God took notice of us before we responded and took notice of him. Okay? And then from what Jesus says about Nathaniel, I, I love that phrase, the word about you're a true Israelite in whom there's no deceit. Um, some translations in whom there is no guile. Some translations in whom there is nothing false. In some way, that just hit home. Nathaniel could tell that, okay, this man, Jesus, wow, he actually sees me. He actually knows me before he's even met me. And he's convinced. You're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. Now think of your own life. Who are the people who are closest to you? It's the people who know you, right? Those are the people who we're really close with, right? They know us, okay? The same way God knows us. And so hear that revelation of God today. God knows you, and he knows you fully. He knows you better than anyone else, even better than you know yourself. So we have to admit that. You know, he's the only one who knows the number of hairs on your head. Okay, this, uh, I thought of this scenario this may never happen to you, but just, um, like, if one day you get arrested and people say, aha, we've caught you, we know everything about you, what you can say to them is, how many hairs on my head? Right? Because he knows, <laughs> and they don't, okay? So just, okay, I don't know if that'll ever practically a practical application for you. <laughs> Sometimes you see that in movies, we know everything about you, you know, just maybe that's what's making me think of that. But only God knows, for example, he knows other things too. How many hairs on my head? There's only one who knows that, okay? He's the one I trust. He's the one I follow. Scripture even says that while you were being formed in the womb, and even before that time, God knew you, and God saw you. Right? 
at Psalm 139, verses 13 and 16, is Jeremiah 1, verse 5. For many of you, or for many of us, it's been a while since we were born. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But I can say with confidence that every one of you was formed in your mother's womb. And while, you, while that was happening, God was watching. God saw you, and God knew you. If you're wondering if he cares, if you're wondering if he has a plan for your life, okay, just know that even back then, he was watching, watching over you, taking delight in you. So we have a God who knows us, but who's very interested in us as well, too. And even interest is a bit of a weak word, it sort of understates it. Now, just to finish, but God knows me, God noticed me, that's the revelation for, uh, for Nathaniel, that's what we know about Jesus, he, he noticed us as well, too. There's a real gospel application to this in the sense that Jesus noticed me, but he, he took pity on me. He saw the helpless, desperate, hopeless situation that I was in when we were lost in sin. We sang the song, It Is Well, and there's the, the lyric in there, the line, that Christ has regarded my helpless estate, like my helpless situation, and has shed his own blood for my soul. So Jesus saw my need, saw my helplessness, okay, and shed his own blood for my soul. The Bible says in Romans 5, 6, we were powerless okay, in our sins. And Ephesians 2 says we were dead in our transgressions. Okay? So we were unable to deal with them, helpless. And Jesus' response was to leave heaven, come down to earth and save us. That's what you see in Philippians 2. Okay? Jesus left heaven, came down to earth, died on the cross in order to res rescue us. From his perspective, it might have been something like this, I just, that Jesus could say, either I die or they all die. And his response was to go to the cross and die for us. Okay. Let that move you, let that encourage you today. Okay. In the best of ways, we have a God who sees you, a God who knows you, and a God who has intervened to save you. For closing scripture, I'm going to go to actually 2 Chronicles verse, uh, verse 9a, 16 verse 9a. Sorry. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Let's pray. God, we, we thank you that you see us, Lord. You are all seeing, you are all knowing. But God, in a way that almost wouldn't be encouraging if, if we didn't know that you cared for us, but you do, God. We thank you for your love, your care, your intervention, Lord. Thank you you know our name, Lord. Thank you you want to have conversations with us. You want to speak to us, Lord, through prayer, th through the word, through even an encounter like Hagar has had, Lord. And thank you, Jesus, you saw our helplessness. You saw our helpless condition in our sin. And you realized that you could save us by dying for us, and so you did. And Lord, we want to be eternally grateful and thankful for that, Lord. And God, thank you that you have a plan and purpose for our lives, Lord. Uh, you watch over us, but you care about what we do, Lord. And Lord, help us to continue to take that as good news. There's things you don't want us to do, Lord, and that's good news. And there's things you want us to do that you approve of, and that's good news, Lord. Help us just to surrender to, our, to your direction, Lord, to really trust you fully with our lives, Lord. And God, we... We pray that we can share this message with others as well, too. There's a God who sees you, who knows you, no matter what you've been through. God has been there. He's been watching you. And Lord, we pray for, for your intervention, for those who just who are desperate, who are hopeless and helpless, Lord. We just pray you would come to them in compassion, Lord. Um, as you did to us in our sin situation, Lord, but as you also do in people's life situations. Think of the people we prayed for, Lord. I pray that those people would know that you are the God who sees them. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we have one final song, and then to make our transition here, I'll turn my thing off. Okay. And then I'll say a, a blessing, and then after the, the service, or after the, the blessing, if you need prayer for anything, um, so Elena, I think it's Ed, but maybe I can do it, because Ed will probably be here and here as well, too, doing things. So Elena and I can be up at the front for prayer. If you have a prayer need, something small, something big, We'd love to pray for you. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.